Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 24th of August and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 28th of August. Now we're coming off the back of the annual central bank symposium at Jackson Hole and markets have really been obsessing about um, the next steps I think with respect to central bank policy not only from the US Federal Reserve but also from the European Central Bank. Now whether or not we get any further details on that um, I don't think what isn't what isn't in doubt is that the ECB is on a path to potentially tapering its asset purchase program. I think the real the real debate really is about the timing of such a tapering process. And ultimately, I don't think Mr. Draghi is really in any rush to furnish any further details with respect to the timing of such a tapering program. I think what will happen is it will probably happen next year, whether it happens in the first quarter of next year or the second quarter of next year, is neither here nor there. Ultimately, I think it will happen. And I think what Jackson Hole will do is it will ultimately allow Janet Yellen of the US Federal Reserve and Mario Draghi to try and coordinate their respective uh, monetary policy programs. The Federal Reserve wants to wind down the size of its balance sheet and I think Mrs Yellen will have one eye on her legacy given there's no guarantee that she will be in situ at the beginning of next year. Um, we already know that President Trump has other potential candidates waiting in the wings. Ultimately we don't know who they are but one of those candidates that has been touted is Gary Cohn. Um, whether or not he, he does become the eventual um, candidate for that particular role only time will tell. But we're also having to deal with an awful lot of what I would call domestic US politics and more bombast from President Trump about the debt ceiling. And I think that's really the next key risk for US markets. Will the Republicans agree to raise the debt ceiling by the end of September? And we have been here before. We've been here in 2011. We've been here in 2013. The difference this time is the Republicans have control of both houses. So the real question is, is President Trump bluff, bluffing. Too early to say the economic data out of the US is still fairly positive. Services PMI data was pretty positive um, this week. And as we look ahead to the beginning of September and the end of August, all eyes this, this upcoming week, starting the 28th of August, are on non-farm payrolls, which is due on Friday. So tune in to our monthly webinar, which starts um, at 1.15 with me and Colin Szynski and we will cover the numbers live. I think that's really the key event for this week along with a whole host of PMI releases and ISM releases from not only the United States but also from pretty much across the entire world. We've got European PMIs, we've got UK PMIs, we have US ISM manufacturing data as well and they all come out at the back end of that week. We've also got a second iteration of US Q2 GDP. I think that will be a that could well be a key indicator. But I think the main focus for this particular week will be on the payrolls data on Friday, the 1st of September, and more importantly, on the wages data. But what we have seen over the past course of, of over the course of the past few days is sharp downward thrusts in US equity markets and we can see it on this S&P chart that I've got in front of me here. Now we have broken below that 2450 area as designated by this support and resistance line here. The next key area of support for me is around about 2410 and I think that for me will dictate whether or not we get a rebound and a retest of the highs around 2490 or whether we get a further downward move in equity markets. And I think a lot of that could well depend on how the dollar performs over the course of the next few days. What we've also seen is a continuing a continuing down move in the German DAX as a result of the stronger euro. And again, I've, I've talked about this before, the 200 day moving average and the down, the down channel that uh, German markets have been in since the end of June. That continues to be the case. So I think the next key support for the German DAX is not only the 200 day moving average, and we talked about this last week on the Eurostoxx 50, it's also the lows that we saw in August, and as well as 
the lows that we saw in early March. And I think if the, if if there is a break lower there, that could well be as a result of a weaker dollar, which could be US politics driven and a higher euro, which could be on the basis of events at Jackson Hole, as of, as of which yet I have no prior knowledge. So I think by the time you get this video, some of that could be out of date. We could certainly get an awful lot more detail about what comes out of Jackson Hole. I don't expect it to be a significantly market moving event. I think the big I think the, the big thing to watch out for with respect to Jackson Hole is really does Mario Draghi try and talk the euro lower? Central banks as a general rule don't worry too much about five or ten percent moves over the course of say for example an eighteen month or a two year period, but when it happens over a very short period of time, I think there does I think there comes a time when they probably have some concerns about the extent of the move higher or lower. So there may be some softening of the hawkish message that I think has been coming out of Europe with respect to the data and the ECB's policy with respect to potentially um, highlighting or guiding with respect to when they might be inclined to look at a tapering program. So that's it for this week. As I say, the, the, only, the only data of note comes at the back end of the week. It's very much manufacturing PMI based and US non-farm payrolls and ADP payrolls. But ultimately, join us for the 1st of September for that non-farm payrolls webinar. Until then, this is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.